enjoy taking your time out on this early Saturday morning. Um, you all, as far as I'm concerned, when I got this information, it just changed my whole mind and concept on how we make sure that what we have grown and attained and uh, uh, through our lifetime that is able to, we can be remembered by it, but we're able to pass it on the proper way. Um, as we've known historically, we've even seen it in Holly Springs in the last uh, 20 some odd years, Holly Springs has changed. Can we agree? Amen. Amen. And uh, a lot of things have changed and um, and as a result of that change, um, I'm not going to say there have been some discrepancies, but um, we've lost some things um, as a result. And um, most of it is because we were not privy to certain information. So for most of our folks, we, are, we learned how to get things, we learned how to acquire things, but we did not learn properly how to make sure that we can pass it along or that we can make sure how we can use it as a benefit to us even while we yet live in a proper way. So today we have um, Team Timeless, Timeless Solutions Financial Group. They're here today. Uh, the primary uh, facilitator will be Mr. Aaron Winston. I'll introduce him in a little bit. Um, this team is a team of individuals, young individuals, to be quite honest. Um, that I have grown to be very fond of and I have great trust with in handling my personal stuff. Um, and um, they're able to do just about everything. And so, um, first, ladies come first. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce folks, uh, Athena, who's our newest member, and Cole Lassiter. They're going to uh, help us. Sherry, please make sure you get at least a thing is done. <laughs> this she's going to explain why. Um, uh, because we believe, I believe, uh, community, that exposure is everything. When you're exposed to things, then you're able to know, wow, I could, didn't know we could do this. I didn't know we could do that. So exposure is everything. My life changed because somebody exposed me to being able to do certain things that I didn't even know I could do. All right? So... Uh, uh, please uh, give your attention to Team Timeless. Let me introduce each name and then we're going to let these two young ladies share something um, and um, I'm going to get out of the way from here on out. Um, this is Athena Curry. Curry, yeah. She's the newest team member, I'm bad with names, but this is Athena Curry. This is Nicole Lassiter. In the back, you got we like it, I like to call him Blake Griffin, but that's Travis Tracy back there. <laughs> and this is uh, one, the, one of the uh, managing partners, this is Anthony Anderson. He uh, actually, Anthony, uh, for you, those of you all that don't know, uh, if you got somebody who's going to, you think maybe going to into sports, uh, he kind of runs champion sports division of, um, of the company, and uh, he's got a lot of the big time uh, athletes that he manages uh, for. Uh, one of them was a Super Bowl winning champion, um, uh, um, Seattle Seahawks. Byron Maxwell. Byron Maxwell. And uh, we've got another one, he's gonna be coming here uh, soon, play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And so, um, and then we'll talk about this gentleman back here. So I'm gonna let Athena share. Uh, let us real quick though pray. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity, your grace, and your mercy. Lord God, without you, we can do nothing. Father, you said my people perish for lack of knowledge. Lord God, we're looking to receive knowledge, information, so that we may apply it to our lives, change the lives of our family, change our own lives, change the lives of our family and our community. Lord, we thank you for this great and wonderful opportunity. We ask for your presence in the midst. In the midst. Open our hearts, open our minds, that we may receive, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Athena, please share with the group. Hello, everyone. My name is Athena Curry. I am the new business coordinator at Team Timeless. 
as well as the broadcast technician at WRAL News Box 50. What is a broadcast technician? A broadcast technician is all the behind the scenes work at the news station. I do the 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, the 10 o'clock, 10.30, and 11 o'clock. I do cameras, floor director, um, prompter, lighting, whichever it is that I am told to do that night, or I choose to do that night, that's what I do, as well as cameras for, I don't know if anybody know about the TV shows, Tar Heel Talk, NC Span, um, Spiritual Awakening. We do all those shows. We have tours at the WRAL studios, working with the news. I work closely with Gerald Owens, Deborah Morgan, Jackie Highland, and David Crabtree, as well as Mike Ways and Greg Fisher. So I work with Team Timeless as well as WRAL. Amen. Please, um, Sherry, make sure you, because she will be glad to do a tour. And if there are any other churches represented, uh, they'd be glad to do a tour with your young people. Um, exposing our young people is the key. So um, if your youth minister is not here or youth director or whoever, um, please uh, get the information and allow your youth to be exposed to these other avenues that they may be able to do something in their life. Amen? Amen. All right, Nicole Lassie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, something that I do with the Team Thomas is assist with the Get Financially Fit Now program, which I think some of you may be aware of. It's um, mm -hmm. part of what we're doing today. Um, I also do recruitment, and I also write resumes. So, from my understanding from Pastor Brown, he made it. Um, he had made me aware that his church family, some of them, would need assistance, maybe with writing resumes, or maybe need some help finding some positions. Or maybe you may have some family members. And so uh, what I'd like for everyone to do, if you have someone that you know, maybe needs some help with their resume, you know, getting it all worked up for the next job opportunity, uh, please leave. I'll probably have a piece of paper up here for you guys to write your name and contact information. And I'm glad to talk with you one-on-one -on -one and see where you are. And you know, if you need some help with your resumes, I have a team. So um, if there's multiple, you know, if there's a group that would like to you know, maybe set something here up at the church where we can come. Maybe have a consultation with you guys. I'd love to do that. I want to actually have a team that could support that. And um, just have one on one conversation with you, see where you want to go with your career, and help you along the way. Amen. So, this is about engaging the community and helping the community be our community to do better. All right? And so, that's what we're trying to do. We are on a move here at Holly Springs, but we're not an island unto ourselves. We want to team up with other churches other organizations that will help our community. Amen? Amen. 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 With that said, um, uh, um, I'm going to turn it over, get it out of the way. We have Mr. Aaron Winston who is here. He's also one of the managing partners of Team Timeless. Um, he is uh, at the top of the table in regard to the industry of finances. Uh, million dollar round table. I mean, he's at the top top. Uh, he's been there for a while now. Uh, he has helped me to rethink some things, uh, uh, educated me on some things, and this young man is, you know, we, we would hope and aspire that our young men would uh, uh, kind of do the same. Would kind of do the same. He, uh, the other great thing about him that uh, we really like, and some of you all might recognize, look at his face and say, he looks familiar, or you may know him. Well, his mother and father are from this very area, so that means he's a product. That means it can come out of Holly Springs, amen? <laughs> it can come out of Holly Springs, okay? All right, and so he's a product of Holly Springs. Um, I don't want to mess up his mom and dad and he'll be there, but let's welcome with a round of applause, Mr. Aaron Winston. Uh, thank you, Pastor Brown. So yes, as uh, Pastor Brown mentioned, I am from Hollow Springs. Uh, I am passionate because I am from Hollow Springs. Right. Yeah. I am not from the new Hollow Springs. I am from the old Hollow Springs. Right. And we'll, we'll get into that conversation later on down the road. Um, today's conversation is all about forever and forgotten. Long story short, wheels and trust. More importantly, having the trust, but forever and forgotten. So our question to you would be, do you want to be remembered forever or do you want to be forgotten? 
And I believe as we go through this, this PowerPoint presentation and as I close today, you will find out that some of us have been forgotten. And the transition at Hollow Springs has happened is actually forgetting us. Mm -hmm. So no longer is our African American community in the newspaper anymore. Uh, no, 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 no more is are we notified for having the best sauce mm -hmm. or having a kid to go to college. It's somebody else's community now. Mm -hmm. And this used to be our community and we're, we're losing it slowly. So that's because we haven't done the right things. Mm -hmm. So today's conversation is forever forgotten. I'm going to talk about 12 mistakes, 12 planning mistakes to keep it in perspective. So if you feel like I'm talking about you, I might be. <laughs> if I'm looking at you, I apologize. <laughs> but I'm here not to disrespect anyone, but I am here to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. I am here to expose everyone to what we are doing wrong. And then also will slowly highlight what we are doing right. And if you feel like we're doing the right thing, then maybe we can try to maintain what's being lost in Hollow Springs. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So as we move forward, Pastor Brown has already talked about Team Timeless enough. I don't have to go into any more detail, but long story short, in a summary, we do all things for our clients, if you allow us to. And that's important. There's a reason why communities lose things. Number one, you have an auto insurance agent with State Farm, you have an insurance broker that's come by your house every now and then to sell you insurance. You have somebody who does your taxes. You have someone who helped you buy your home. You have someone who helped you finance your home. I've just named five or six different professionals, and nobody knows you. They don't even go to your church. If they do go to your church, you don't see them hardly even. So as we talk about team kindness, the reason why we are always losing our assets, the reason why we're losing our mindset is because we don't have that power company that puts it all together. So as we go through this conversation, please look at it, please understand it, and uh, please take it in. What do we do? Pastor Brown mentioned it, 401Ks, IRAs, estate planning, asset distribution, you name it, we do it. Taxes is probably the only thing that we don't focus on, but we can provide that for our clients if they, if they want us to. People on, on the team, Pastor Brown already mentioned a lot of folks, but Anthony Anderson, my business partner, we've known for a long time, helps out with business development and property development. Second person will be a gentleman named Jim. Jim does all the estate planning for us. So anytime we're doing a will and a trust, he's the one handling most of it. We are organizing it, factoring it in, but you may hear from Jim or Kelly as it relates to getting the trust complete. Next person, a guy named Tom. Tom is our CPA, does all of our taxes for us and our clients. Next person is Travis Tracy, young gentleman that's been with us for about over a year now uh, and is going to be taking our place as we get older. That is, uh, that is my extra strategy, given on the past to him. <clears throat> Troy, young man in the back, doing the video. Ms. McCauley, you already heard from her, and Ms. Athena, you also heard from her as well. Most important thing, iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another. That's important for us. I don't want to be around folks that don't make me better. And that's the, our young generation. That's my folks. So I encourage you as you look at your family, look at your life, you don't want to be around folks that don't hold you back. That's another reason why we are forgotten. Understand that, remember that as we move forward. Amen? All right. This is how I'm giving back. It's called Get Financially Fit Now. Yes, I'm from Hollow Springs. I've been from Hollow Springs. I've been around Hollow Springs. I went to Apex Elementary School, went to Apex Middle School, went to Apex High School. Notice I never said Hollow Springs. It wasn't one of those when I was here. Graduated, went on to Methodist University, played four years of basketball, came back, moved to Charlotte, and Hollow Springs has just changed tremendously. So we're here, and we're here to express, and talk about, and explain why Hollow Springs has changed. But get financially fit now. That's our focus. Nicole and I, and along with Anthony and Pastor Brown and Travis and Athena and a couple other folks are now here. We go out every time and talk to the community because we are financial advisors. We love to deal with our clients, but for some reason, a lot of our clients don't want to talk to us half the time. We call you, we try to help you and educate you. You tell us no, you hide from us like we can build for that. We ain't build for that. Everything we try to tell you is going to help you and your family and your life. So we're here for you. But get financially fit, for some reason, when we're able to go through the pastor, educate the pastor, the pastor can get these folks out here today, and thank you. 
Pastor Brown, thank you for leading. Thank you for that conversation. Anyone from House Range, United Church of Christ, thank you. So here we go as we move forward through the process. Are you ready? It's important. Are you ready? We enjoy our Thanksgiving. We enjoy our Christmas. Life has passed us by. I am now 35 years old. I remember when I was 25. I can't wait to see what I'll be in 10 years. I remember that. I was, it's already here. And I just went through this here. So are you ready? Before you know it, if you're 65 right now, you're going to be 75 pretty fast. So what are we doing? If you're 45, you're going to be 55 pretty fast. So what are we doing? So are you ready? Are you ready for these changes? Things, things are changing. If you don't know, just drive the house around, just drive around. Put on your church music, just drive around. Things have changed. Are you ready? All right, you got in your pamphlets. I know everybody has already went through it and fumbled through them. But in our pamphlet, there is the most important thing is this flyer. So as we go through this PowerPoint presentation, any question that you have is going to be in these 12 boxes. So for this presentation, we'll ask you to keep your questions to yourself, but make sure you check off the box as it relates to what applies to you. It is important to do that because after we're done, we're going to come around and talk to each one individually, and we're going to get one from everybody. If you have nothing on it, that is fine. If you have 12 things on it, thank you. But we're going to get one from everybody. The next form behind that is a data form. We'll go, we'll go more into detail about this, but this is an opportunity to go ahead and schedule a time to meet with us. Again, we're not going to track you down. If you put your name and information on here, we ain't going to call you every day trying to get you to come to our office to sell you something. It's not about that. We're just letting you know when you are ready and you want to move forward and you will be remembered forever. Fill that form out and we'll have a hard part conversation. <coughs> Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. The first, or number 12. Now, as we go through these orders, this is not in priority order. This is just 12 ideas. So remember that. So the first, number one, or number 12. Our first concept is who are you talking to? Your source of your advice. So if you've ever forgotten, who are you having a conversation with to help you remember help you get that trust, help you plan your life. Who are you talking to? Make sure that person is someone of knowledge, someone who has a license. So as we look at our system, make sure it's not old Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam's got great knowledge, but he can't implement it. And I'll say that with respect. You got great knowledge, great education, but when it comes to implementing, you still got to implement. So seek someone like us, or seek us, so we can help you implement. Tell us what Uncle Sam said, Uncle Johnny said, Granddad Joseph, whatever he said, tell us, we can implement it for you. Does that make sense? So understand that seeking the source of advice, making sure you just don't go around just talking around folks that haven't done it. Talk to folks who have completed. And today we're gonna to talk about a trust, not a will, and I'll explain why. But seek that advice, seek the best advice. Amen. So check off that box if that's important to you. If you feel like around your circle you may not have the right person in place right now, please check out check off that box. It doesn't mean that you don't know anything. It just means that you want to have a heart to heart conversation with someone to at least eliminate some options. Number eleven. You don't think you need a plan at all. You just say, you know what? I don't need nothing. I get my social security check every month. I got my houses paid off. I make ends meet. I don't need no plan. Yeah, but you don't recognize your house is worth maybe fifty, sixty thousand dollars Your land is worth $100,000. If you don't believe so, wait till somebody comes from Hollow Springs trying to buy you out. So you sitting on $150,000 of assets right now. So if you say to yourself, you don't need a plan, I beg the difference. Somebody's planning for you. So as we go through this, we want to prevent going through probate. If anyone's ever been through probate, it's a long process. It's tedious, and it costs a lot of money. So let's not go through probate. Probate is a court system. Let's do a trust. It costs you $495, and we'll talk about that. 
if you get your trust, you ain't got to worry about going through probate. You already got the court system involved early while you're living and while you can change things. Does everybody understand that? The last stage is the easy way or the hard way. The hard way is bringing somebody else that you don't know into your life when you have passed to pass out your assets to your cousins, to your spouse. We don't want that. The easy way is to go ahead and identify who you want right now to help you organize your assets. And those assets, like I said, a mobile home on an acre of land, that's $150,000 in Hollow Springs. Everybody understand that? So, having no plan at all. It's important because we want to avoid probate. It's also important to understand if we don't have a plan, God did. <clears throat> so if he had a plan for us all, how come we don't have a plan for ourselves? So have some type of plan. But we cannot accept, I'm telling you now, House Springs, because you've been exposed to it, we cannot accept no plan. Mm -hmm. The worst thing you could do is have a will. At least have that will. But a trust is where you need to be. A trust, uh, organizing a trust, a document that passes on your personal assets to a legal ownership that you own that trust. You have to have that. You have to have that. Then you don't have to worry about anybody coming in and trying to take your stuff. God had a plan. I, we need to have one. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So, number 11. If you feel like that you don't need a plan, just check that box. All we want to do is have a hard, hard conversation and show you that you might need a plan. But, trust me, I love to get out of my own way. Prove to me that you don't need one. If you can prove to me you don't need one, then that's great. We'll hug, kiss, and say thank you. You don't need one. <laughs> but I want to make sure at least you understand that you need a plan. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Number 10. Now that you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to get a trust. <clears throat> or I might get a will. But I, you know what? I don't have enough assets. I don't have what I think I should have. But let's talk about it. In your trust, there's something called a revocable trust. Revocable means you can change it every day, every hour, every month. Irrevocable means you can't change. So this trust, this document, you can change it anytime you want to. Within that trust, the first thing obviously the trust is, is for an individual or a couple to organize their life and it can be changed anytime and terminated upon your death. What it does, it moves your personal property, your personal assets of your ownership into a legal document. So therefore, instead of you owning your truck, instead of me, Aaron Winston, owning my truck, when I pass, it'll go to the Winston Trust. All that means is when somebody sells my truck, the cash goes into the trust. So if you don't trust somebody to take care of your truck or your assets when you pass, now you just put it into the trust. You ain't got to worry about it. Because a lot of our clients tell us, well, I don't trust nobody. I don't want this person to get my land. But if you put them to a trust, you ain't got to worry about it. Next one. Of this trust, of having the trust, our job is to avoid probate entirely. Stay away from probate. Stay away from the court system. The second thing is to pass on or move your property, your assets, obviously, to your beneficiaries immediately. That's immediately. The third thing is to ensure that your minor children are taken care of financially. The trust does not say that, yes, if I pass, that my children are going to go to whoever I tell it to. No, the trust just says financially, I'm going to take care of my children. The court system, based on the trust, based on the will of the trust, I can say I want this person to take care of my children. The, tr the court system can say, okay, and the cash to support that is tied into the trust. That's the life insurance that we'll talk about in a little bit. Does everybody follow me? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> also, the trust is designed to handle all your financial affairs. Every one of your financial affairs. So, for number 10, if you feel that you don't have enough assets, please check that box. We'll have that conversation. <laughs> number 9, now you have the trust, do you think you're safe? No. There's one thing you have to do within your trust, is you have to fund your trust. So I've got this document, I've got these legal, these legal entities, but now you've got to move your assets into that trust. You've got to prepare your trust to receive things if you pass. So having that trust, funding that trust, what funds that trust? 
Number one, your real estate, your land, your bank accounts, your credit union accounts, your life insurance, your brokerage accounts, your 401ks, your annuities, your IRAs, your cars. I'm going to keep going on and on and on. Everything funds that trust. So when you get your trust set up, now we've got to make sure we change some things to for it all to go into your trust document. We have a conversation with our clients about hope so money and no so money. <laughs> hope so money is money that we hope it does well. And for some of us in the room, we're seniors. We hope the market picks up. We hope the market makes money. Well, a lot of times we don't have enough time for hope. So we like a conversation called I know so money. That's your safe money, that's your green money, that's your checking, your savings, your CDs, your, your money market accounts, your annuities, your life insurance. That's no-so money. So we like the fact that your trust is funded by I know-so money, not I hope-so money. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Because your trust is saying this is going to happen when I pass. So if you have I hope-so money, you don't know how much money it's going to be when you pass. If you have I know-so money, you already know. What's going to be there when you pass? Does that make sense? So number nine, if you feel like you do have assets, but you need to properly place them in a trust, and you need someone to explain that to you, check box nine. Number eight, why do I need life insurance? I'm going to tell you now, life insurance is the number one product that has been given to us that can protect our family forever. Forever. And as you see this screen, I have lottery tickets up. Mm -hmm. We may play the lottery, there's nothing wrong with that. But the chances of you winning the lottery, slim to none. The chances of us passing away, 100%. <laughs> so we pay a dollar to the lottery every month. We pay $100 every two months. If you just put that money into a life policy, yeah, you're not going to win money, but your beneficiary will. So I have this million dollars up here, and people don't recognize, but for $40 a month, you can leave a million dollars to your family. And if you don't know who you want to pass it to, if you don't know who you trust, and you want to give it to your niece, or your great niece, or someone who ain't even here yet, that's what trust is for. So I encourage you, $40 or $50 a month, you can leave a million dollars to your family. And I'll tell you, our community, we're not doing that. If somebody tells you about life insurance, you hide and you run. You rather go buy an iPad, you rather go buy a cell phone, than funding your life policy. And that's why we're forgotten. If you're forever, you leave life insurance. So if someone says, why don't you leave two, three million dollars to somebody? Why not? Life insurance doesn't. Very inexpensive. And please get it before you get to the point where you can't get it. So life insurance is important. So to fund your trust, life insurance is one thing we love to have to fund your trust. Does that make sense? Life insurance. Not the lottery. Mm -hmm. I've had people tell us all the time, when I win the lottery, I'm going to call you. <laughs> so my response will, you're never going to call me. <laughs> Well, my response to them is, well, let's get life insurance. You're always going to call me. Every week, you're going to call me. Every year, you're going to call me. You're going to do an annual review. But life insurance, it's important. Everybody in here should have life insurance. If you don't have any, get some. If you have some, get some more. I recommend it. And we want to help you. I'm not going to say we will help you. We'll be around. No, no. We want to help you. We are here. We've got 100 companies that can help you for the best of the best. So if you feel that Johnny Smith down the road is not my color, if you feel that he has a better product, he does not. And you can see me every day. And you know how to get me. Life insurance. It funds your trust immediately. So if you feel like you don't have any assets, if you spend $50 a month, now you have an asset that you can pass on into your trust. So if you feel like you didn't have it, now I'll just explain how you do it. Life insurance. So number eight, if you feel like you do have life insurance, you need to properly fund it. If you feel like you don't have life insurance, you need to find out how much you need, give us a call. Check box eight, life insurance. Number seven, 
Some call it required minimum distribution. It's called RMD. If you've never heard of it, it is the, the government's way of saying you can fund your money, or fund your retirement for as long as you want. However, when you reach 70 and a half, that's 7.5, sometimes 70, you need to take out a certain amount of money every year. And it's, it's a percentage. So let's say if I have $100,000, they're saying to you, you've got to take out $1,000. You've got to take out $2,000 every year. And if you don't, you'll be penalized. So for some of us who are blessed, who say, we've got money, qualified money. Qualified money is money in your 401k. You've been deferring your taxes your whole life. If you have that money, then you can now, you have to do the RD. You have to take money out. For those who are blessed and don't need it, we can explain to you how to maximize that. And it's the power of life insurance. But in RD, you've got to take it out. <clears throat> Excuse me, you've got to take it out. So what I'm explaining here, someone who has to take out $15,000 a year, and they did not. Number one, what the IRS does is they tax you at 50%. Mm -hmm. So that's $7,500 automatically that's going to be taxed. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to tax you on your estate planning tax or your income tax. For this purpose here, they're at 30%. So Uncle Sam is going to take automatically $12,000 from your $15,000. Would that leave that person mm -hmm. just $3,000? Mm -hmm. So for those who are blessed and don't need to take their R&D, and if you do take it, you're saying, I don't need the money now. I'm just taking an RMD. I've done my planning correctly. I've lived off my pension. I've lived off my Social Security. I just have some extra cash that has been deferred. Well, this is the best way, as we're going to show you now. This is one of our clients that we've worked with. This client had about $93,000 in an annuity. It was qualified money. That means that they have to pull it out at 70 and a half, but they didn't need it. So what we explained to her, was this 93000 if you immediately put it into a product with us, you'll automatically have a death benefit of 152 Now let me explain this. 93000 qualified money. That means that's deferred taxes. So if you pass, you're passing a taxable income to whoever you leave behind. A spouse, a child, a grandchild. Taxable money. So that means that 93000 is going to be taxed. We have a product that allows you to take the R&D, which for this scenario is $6,000, and we can fund a life policy. So the most important thing for you is that if you pass, now you're not passing 93 of taxable money, you're passing 152 of tax free money. Everybody understand that? The most important thing that someone may ask, well, what happened to my 93,000 if I need that money? I may need year one, year two, year three, year four. Something may happen if I need that money. In this illustration, uh, you can see my little line here. In this illustration, they still have exactly what they put into it. So all this, is, all this insurance company is doing is leveraging your money with everybody else just like you, and they're investing to stuff that's risky. But they're guaranteeing you that you have some guarantees for life insurance. Does that make sense? Also, the most important thing that I like about it is we have a problem with long-term care. Long-term care is our sick and shut in, and it costs money. And a lot of times, Medicaid takes care of us. So if you qualify for Medicaid, then they're going to provide long-term care for you. But I know, just like my grandma, who is on Medicaid, but she says, if I pass, I don't want to be in my, I don't want to be in somebody else's house. If I need long-term care, I'm not going to a restaurant. I'm staying in East Angeles. Mm -hmm. That's what my grandma says. Mm -hmm. So if she says that, grandma needs long-term care. So if she needs long-term care, but she can't afford it monthly. So if she can't afford it, she may have something <coughs> that is dormant. Land, house, she has cash. So now she's able to turn this cash, this 93000 into a death benefit, and it gives her long-term care benefit, which is $3,000 a month. So what that means to you, if you're in this scenario and you have $93,000 of money that you don't need that's qualified, you can move it over into a product that will give you a death benefit of $152 or 155 
and you have long-term care insurance. So you have the best of both worlds. So what if, if I don't need my long-term care and I live to be longer than 80 or 90 years old, you still have access to that cash. What if, what if I pass away tomorrow, you're passing more money on to your beneficiary tax-free? What if I live a longer life and now I can't eat, I can't feed myself, I can't bathe myself, two of the six daily activities of long-term care, I now have $3,000 that can be given to me to help support my long-term care expenses. Everybody understand that? Nothing was taken from this client. They weren't asked to pay more money. They were just leveraging what they currently had to maximize their trust and to maximize anything that may happen. All the what-ifs. Does that make sense? And that's what we're here for. So that's the R&D. So, <clears throat> there's something called a QLAC that has just came out that people may not know about. It's a qualified longevity annuity contract. What that QLAC states, if you have money that is qualified, the, the IRS says you have to do at 70 you have, you've got to take money out. Now the IRS has came up with another rule that states 25% of your qualified money does not have to be tied to the r &D. Does that make sense? So $100,000, 75,000 of that money has to be tied to the, the government's R&D. 25% or 25,000 of her money does not have to be tied into the R&D. So she can use that money for kind of whatever she wants. However, because the IRS gives you one thing, they also give you another. So what they say, your max is 125. So for simple math, I believe if you have a half a million dollars, then 125 is the max you can do. So if you have 700,000, only 125. It's always going to be the max. Next thing, in your QLAC, you can't have anything variable. You can't have a variable annuity. You can't have a fixed annuity. You can't have a fi fixed index annuity. You can't have any kind of cash value life policies. Long story short, they're telling you the hope so money, it has to go into that. <coughs> The no-so money, guarantee stuff, you can't put it into that. I'm not sure why they said that, but what that means to you is you got to put 25% into the stock market. I'm not sure why. So for all the good things about it, that's the only thing. Everybody understand that? That's called a QA. Roth IRAs don't count. Roth IRAs are very important. Roth IRAs, non-qualified accounts, that's all tax-free. And it's important for our generation to have things tax-free. Your generation, you're blessed, taxes are low. Our generation, taxes are going to go back pretty high, back to 50, 55 percent. So it's important for us to fund things tax-free. That's why life insurance is very important. So if you have a question about your R&D, some of you are in this room who might have qualified money that you have to do something with at 70 and a half. You have an interest rate, you've got to pull out. Instead of pulling that money out and not doing anything with it, we can show you how to pull it out and to maximize your retirement, to maximize your family, to be with them forever. Does that make sense? Number six. All right. This is important to me because I feel a lot of times, and I get in trouble for this, but I feel that our community as a whole has become more and more selfish. We want to take care of ourselves and ourselves alone. And I think that's unacceptable. If you think about 50 or 60 years ago, 100 years ago, if you feel that your mom and your dad were selfish, imagine if they didn't have, if they weren't selfish. Imagine if they passed on something. Or imagine if they knew and passed on some assets to you. Where would your life be? Imagine my son who's two, my daughter who's four. If they start their college, if they start their life, their career with either no money or just $20,000. Imagine what that $20,000 can help you do. So I ask you, if you're selfish, just remember, you're cutting off your chain. You're capping out your family. So let's not be selfish. If we're not selfish, we can now take care of that grandchild that we don't even know is coming yet. My last name is Winston. There's not any more Winston boys left except for my son. Something happens. We need to pass that name on. So I encourage you to not be selfish. 
It's important. So number six, please don't be selfish. Because it's in the good book. The Bible states it, says it. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children and children, and the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the. And I, it's the just, but I want to let you know something. Nowadays, when you don't leave an inheritance for your children's children, and you don't remember, and you want to be now selfish, and you forget to take care of your family, now other folks are waiting for you to mess up. They're in the paper looking for your land to be available. They're looking for your house to be on four feet. They can't wait. And as soon as it pops up in the court records, they say it's public knowledge, but for some reason the public don't know a couple of people. <laughs> and when they do that, they come in and they buy your house. And the next thing you know, you got somebody else that you've never known before, you never met before, now they live beside you. Or they're going to own your house. Or they own somebody else's house. They're going to rent it back out to you. So I'm letting you know right now, let's not be selfish. Because it's in that good book. So it talks about it's up for the righteous, for the just. But I'm telling you right now, it ain't like that anymore. Things have changed. No longer can you just forget and you can pass that on to your brother and he can take care of you. Now you forget. Next thing you know, a guy who lives in New York owns everything you have. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you now, please don't be selfish. Well, you ain't have to use New York. New <laughs> Jersey. <laughs> Put New York. You know, like, that's important. That's important. The, the, the folks from up north, the folks from New York, they coming down here because this is good life down here. It's right. a good life down here. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'm just letting you know it's in the Bible. Please don't be selfish. And I'm not a pastor, I'm not a deacon, I'm not a trustee, but I'm just letting you know it is in the Bible. And if you don't know where it is, it's so in Proverbs 13. <laughs> so it's important. We are in a country, we are in a culture that we're blessed that we can plant a seed. We can plant a tree today. We may never be under that shade tree. We may never sit here and enjoy that tree, but our children's children's children can enjoy that shade tree. That is important. We are in America. We are in America. We can do that, but we're not taking advantage of that. And you wonder why these third world countries. And you wonder why these folks overseas, why they have so much hatred for us. Because we are selfish. And I'm not saying we in this room, but we <coughs> take things for granted. We have that opportunity. And it's all with the power of life insurance. Leveraging life insurance. Everybody understand that? Yes. So I have this little faded shade tree. That I, look, I remember in my grandma's house, she had a little pine tree. We used to climb up it all the time. It didn't give us too much shade, but it was enough shade. <laughs> so I'm letting you know now, if you will provide that shade for your family, please check that box, box number six. Don't be selfish. And if you say you're selfish, that's fine. I'm selfish too. My mom and dad, I'm the only child. I do not want to take care of them when they get older. It'll kill me. I can't wipe their tears. <laughs> It'll kill me. So I've already told them I'm selfish. But I am going to do it one thing. I'm going to make sure they're properly prepared mm -hmm. so somebody else can. Mm -hmm. And I swear I will supervise. Mm -hmm. I'll watch that, yes. that chair. And I know my dad. He's going he gonna to fuss at me. I don't care if he's if I'm 35 or if I'm 55. He's going to always fuss at me. Always. So I, I, I'm going to have to beat him up when he gets <laughs> So I know I ain't going to take care of him. I'd rather somebody else take care of him. Some young pretty girl would take care of him. Me and him going to fight. <laughs> so I'm letting you know I'm selfish. But I'm selfish for another reason. So understand that. Number, number five. Okay, now you have the trust. Now you've got the assets. Now you've got the life insurance. You put it all into a trust. Who do you trust? And that's called the successor trustee. So now that you have the trust, you have to deem somebody, some company, whoever it is, to say they're going to control your assets. That don't mean they make your money from it. So if I have a trust and I leave Nicole as my successor trustee, that don't mean she's making any money from it. That just means she's honoring my wishes. Whatever I wish in my trust, she has to do. So if I say there's $100,000 that's being given to my son every year until he's 50, give him $1,000 a year, that's what she does. Mm -hmm. That's all they do. That's somebody you trust. And most folks, 
like to hire a firm. Why? Because that firm is going to be around for years and years and generations and generations. And guess what? Like our firm. Look how young we are. We're going to be around, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So if something happens to you guys in the past, we should still be there. So that's what we're here for. So a successful trustee. So with this successful trustee, they are, they locate all your estate planning documents, everything you've had in your trust, they locate it, they already don't have it. What they do next is they file an inventory and an appraisal of everything you have, house, land, cars. Next thing they do is they pay any creditors, any taxes, any fees. And for those of us who think that when we pass, all our debt just goes away. That's not true. <laughs> Next one. They distribute assets to the beneficiaries. That's what that successor trustee does. So, if you feel like you don't have someone you truly trust, although you've got the trust document, you've got the retirement account, you've got the life insurance, if you don't really think you know anybody you trust, you, know, you may not trust your brother, you may not trust the folks, although they're bound by court to do exactly what you say, then check that box. We can find somebody you can trust. Amen. That's box five. Number four, this is very important. The failure to update and review your beneficiaries, that's a key mistake. For those of us who had life insurance before you got married, you may find out you still got your mama as your beneficiary, your mother has passed. Some of us have actually had our children who's five years old as our beneficiaries. So understanding to review your beneficiaries. Your beneficiaries need to be, they be up to date, they need to be accessible in a secure location. They need to be compatible or complete for both primary and contingent. What contingent means, if my primary, if my main person passes, I can pass it to somebody else. But if you have a trust, you don't need a contingent. The trust does it all, and in your trust, the will and all that stuff dictates and states who that next person will be in line for. So if you have a trust, you name all your beneficiaries the trust. And that trust says, she is my successor trustee. If something happens to her, then there's somebody else who is my successor trustee. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So, understanding, reviewing your beneficiaries. Reviewing your beneficiaries and making sure that your minors are appropriate as a beneficiary. Making sure that you don't have a five-year-old as your beneficiary. Because I know your thoughts. Your thought says, if something happens to me, I'm going to live a long life. So if something happens to me, I want to make sure my children are taken care of. Well, right now your children are only five years old or ten years old. They could be 25 and they, you still can't trust them. <laughs> Nowadays, our generation, we ain't, we ain't quite right. So we, we don't work for our jobs. So 25-year-old now, we, you know, we rather play Nintendo and PlayStation and read. We don't, we don't understand things. And we're blessed to have folks who do. So what I would say to you, even though if you have your children down, as a beneficiary, if you name the trust, you can still have your children as a beneficiary. It just now goes into the trust until that person becomes competent enough to receive those assets. Does that make sense? So if you're afraid that you've got some land and your land is worth a million dollars and you're afraid that when you pass that land on to Uncle Bobby, Uncle Bobby, he gonna do something else with it. If you tie it to the trust, that's fine. Uncle Bobby can't do nothing. If he does it, all, all the cash go back into the trust anyway. That's the best thing to have. A trust keeps air, all the negative out. A trust keeps somebody who wants to do something bad and can't do nothing bad. If they do, it all go back into the trust. So I'm telling you, the trust is the answer at all times. 99.9% of the time. There's always just that one chance, one chance, but a trust is the answer. So, also for your beneficiaries, making sure you can leave a multi-generational payout. This is important because now, Social Security may not be around for my generation, the 35 or under generation. We, we don't have pensions no more. So for the blessed older generation, preparing your trust properly, you might be able to guarantee an income stream for your children's children because the government is going to stop doing it. So funding a trust and making sure the beneficiaries have a multi-generational payout is important. Everybody understand that? So why ways? to properly pass on property when you pass. Number one way, beneficiary designations. Next one, 
joint tenant and rights of survivorship. This means that Angie and I are partners. This means if something happens and I pass, we're joint tenants. That means she's automatically goes to him. Next, payable upon death. If I pass, automatically cash just goes to my, my beneficiary. Next one is transfer upon death. That's property. There's now not transferring cash, but transferring the property upon death. And the next one is the living trust. These are five ways to avoid probate automatically. So what this means, if you have your children, or if you have someone down as your beneficiary on your life policy, it automatically will go to them. But if you don't have anybody down, that's where we're going to go next. Now, things that happen is going to automatically have probate. Number one, assets are held in your name alone. What that means, I mean, my dad, for an example, he's got about five cars. Two of them is just in his name. So if something happens, those cars, who's it go to? Now, go through probate. Probate says it's going to go to, obviously, your spouse. That's going to cost. So through his trust, he can now make sure that he names all his property, all his assets, goes to X, Y, Z. That's important. So now they have to go through probate. Next one, no designated beneficiary. So if you don't have any beneficiary, it automatically goes to your estate, which now is going to be tied to probate. Remember, everything we do, we're trying to keep it out of probate. Number one, next one, it becomes a public document. And we talked about that. You have land, you have house, it becomes a public document, but for some reason, the public don't really know. It's just a few percent that know that things are available. Next, it's open up to now to your creditors. So if you have assets and now you've passed, your creditors, the ones you own, have a right to come right in and get your money. Next, it's time consuming and expensive. So probate are these five things. We are trying to avoid that all the time. Everybody understand that? So here's me and another question. I'm going to read this. If you have a house and your house is going to be passed to your daughter in your last will and testament, does it go through probate? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody say no? Well, your daughter said yes, everybody can say that now. But <laughs> you're all right. Yes, it will go through probate because a will is not a contract. And that's important. So for those who say, well, I've got a will, I'm taken care of. But what you're really saying is, those things that don't have a beneficiary, those things that don't have a transfer of death, those things that don't have a pass on the death that I pass, then that's what the will says. The will says that my truck will go to somebody else, but it still has to go through probate. So I mentioned before, you can have a will, but you're going to still go through probate. You're not going to be, it's not the best thing. If that's the only thing, then we respect that. That's the only thing you can do. But we recommend getting the trust. Then you have to worry about nothing. So remember that. A will is fine, but it's not the best thing. And it's not the last resort. So, we're going to talk about this one second. Some of us don't recognize how we are disinheriting our families. Disinheriting our generations. There's something called per striper, per stripings, and per capita. We just have to be in the state of North Carolina. We are in the best of the two. But per capita, that means that you have John's assets and his deceased has passed away. Now, all of a sudden, it doesn't go 50 50 to his kids. It doesn't go 50 50 to the beneficiaries. It just goes to the elder, 100% goes. So you're going to cap off another generation. So what that means, if Nicole and I are brother and sister, and if I pass, then my kids get nothing from mom and dad. Everything goes to her because she may be the eldest. Does that make sense? Her stripes is where we are. That means it's 50-50. Something happened to me, then my portion is now divided into my kids. And then their portions divided into their kids. It keeps going on and on and on. We just happen to be blessed to be in a state that provides that. But if we were not, we truly would have to do some estate planning. But we are in for striking. So I, as I tell you, it's because of that, we don't want to disinherit our grandkids unintentionally. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So for number four, reviewing your beneficiaries. Things <coughs> allow us to have a heart to heart conversation with you about that. We've got reports, we've got reviews. So for those who have life insurance, 
for those who have everything where they want it to be. Let us come in for free and review that. It is not a sales conversation. It is an educational conversation to tell you what you need to do better or to tell you, great job. Everybody understand that? At least find yourself in the know. We don't want to say, oh, I did not know that. Because I'm here to tell you now, it could happen. Because you may trust somebody who sold you a product, and I'm telling you right now, it may not be the best thing. Not because they didn't know, but because things have changed. Does everybody understand that? Companies change. Insurance companies change. Our economy changes. So you got to make sure that your advisor, if you have one, is up with those times. Because I'm going to tell you now, I've been in this business for at least 14 years. And it may not be long for some, but in our industry, that's actually pretty good. And I'll tell you now, I've had clients that I did things for in 2006. I still have to review their stuff because there's new things out. And I have to tell them, hey, you, got, you had the best thing then, but now there's something a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have that review. And from the heart, we can help you with that review. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So number four, if you need to have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation about your reviews, let us know. Please check that box. Number three, this is very important to me. I call it Big Mama, but yeah. bringing the family together. <laughs> this is a key mistake. We are so secret. <laughs> so secret. We don't see grandma to Thanksgiving, baby Christmas. We're married now, or we're married and divorced, and you go in all kinds of places. Life gets busy. The reason why we are not together, because we're naturally already secretive. Already. <laughs> and now we're not coming together and telling the family. So I'm going to steal this one from what one of my partners, Pastor Brown, does. And you see this picture. This is when we came to church last time. <coughs> but when we do your review, we want to bring your family together. So if you have a trust, the last thing you need to do is fund it and then bring everybody together to tell them what you just did. Everybody understand that? So you bring your family together. This is not a time to show off. It's just a time to say, we're bringing everybody together. Make sure we have some food so we can eat. <laughs> we're bringing everybody together. We're going to explain what we just did and how it needs to work. So everybody's on the same page. And that's what happens. What happens is nobody's on the same page. Big Mama passes away. And now, World War II, somehow, things change. You know, Uncle Jimmy done changed his whole mindset now. He different now. Grandma gone. Granddaddy gone. So bringing everybody together so everybody can see everybody's eyes and say this is what's going to happen. And if you don't have a trust, you've got to have this. You've got to bring your family together. If you do have a trust, if you just happen to forget, you're 50% okay because trust won't do it anyway. But bring everybody together. But somebody's going to be mad because they're not in the trust. Mm -hmm. Somebody gonna be mad because they think they're entitled to something that they probably are not entitled to. And they could be entitled to it, but you decided not to give it to them. That's on them. That's on you. But bringing family together. I like to call it Big Mom. Bringing the family together. That is a key mistake. So, if you need help bringing the family together, check box three. Bringing the family together and having that heart-to-heart -heart conversation. I will tell you, we have brought families together, we have had conversations with them, and they still didn't do nothing. <laughs> I'll give you a scenario later on, but at least you did. Everybody understand that. Number two, who is on your way? And we talk about that a whole lot. Who is on your team that's going to help your team? Who is on your, who's in your family that's here to help you and not take anything from you? And when you bring your family together, you're going to find out real quick who's on your team. So I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to do that. So who is on your wagon? That's number two. So I've got little pictures up there. Who is on your wagon? So number two, check that box to identify who. Sometimes it takes folks on the outside looking in to tell you they should be on their way. Check that box if you need that review. Because we will tell you honestly, yes or no. And the last one, 
called procrastination. <laughs> so today, I believe it's December 6th, we have had a conversation. This man <laughs> brought his team here, they done talked to us, and they, done, they did a wonderful job. <laughs> they brought flyers and stuff, we done checked boxes, and we know we need to do something. He just ain't done it yet. <laughs> I don't know why it is, but it's called procrastination. So we keep procrastinating. All of a sudden, in 2017, when you clean up your locker, you clean up your house, you find this little flyer. And you say, you know what? I need to call that person. Or you have a life changing event. And that life changing event automatically eliminates procrastination. So what I'm telling you is don't have that life changing event. Just go ahead and get it out of the way. Call us. We've got that nice little form. We'll print it out. It's in color. Remember, color cost. <laughs> it's in color. We got times highlighted. You can select your time. You don't have to think about the time. You can select your time. Procrastination. It is important. Please don't procrastinate. I'm telling you now. Don't procrastinate. It is here. Don't let this happen. We're going to have the same conversation next Thanksgiving, next Christmas. Don't need to happen. Everybody understand that? So, these are your opportunities. My partners and I, we are the best thing for you. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. I've got family members who have went to another company, and that is on them. But then that company told them that they can't do something. Then they call us. I said, yes, you can. Let me show you how. I'm just letting you know, it's just not my mind, just not Pastor Brown's mind. We've got minds here, we've got minds ain't here. We bring all our resources together for you. So I'm telling you now, house friends, we're privileged because we are the best for you. I'm telling you that right now because we understand everything. We're going to ask you about your car payments. We'll help you with your car, tell you don't pay it off. We'll have that car. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you utilize us. Use us as much as you possibly can. So you got our contact information in there. You got every flyer we talked about. That's the important thing. You got plenty of opportunities. Please take advantage of it. And I'm telling you too. Please don't take what I've done today. And don't be going to tell nobody else. Mm. Or don't be trying to have somebody down the road that's not competitive. <laughs> right now, God do not like others. <laughs> So, I wish no Ill, Ill will, you understand that, but then you know right now, please don't waste our time. We are here to help you, trust me. So, I'm going to give you an example of a family called the Jacobs family before we get out of here. The Jacobs family has eight kids. Now, I want you to look at this. If you got your pens and pencils, write it down. Eight kids. Of those eight kids, two have passed away. Two have passed away. So mama and daddy have done their job. They don't build land and house. They got call and everything. Daddy done passed. It's just mama hanging on. Mama's 87 years old. Mama's got these eight kids. Two done passed away. Of those two that passed away, one of them had three kids. The other one had two kids that the family don't even talk to. That's important to know. Why? Because of those six living kids, one has gifted their rights of any land, any house, any cars to their two other kids. So now we got eight folks, eight kids, two have passed, have left to two of their children and the other three of their children. One has said, I want to do with it. I'm going to give my other two to my kids. So what that's important to you, that's seven grandkids. Seven grandkids and five elders that are still living. And they all are entitled to this. 17 acres with local, local homes all alone. 23 acres of raw land. Everything worth $600,000 and growing. Because as we know, back in the day, they gave us 40 acres in a, a mural. They forgot on these 40 acres. They go keep keep praised every day. That's why they pay forty acres back. <laughs> so please, forever forgotten. You get a trust, they can't have your forty acres. Even if you mess up, 
At least you allow somebody else to help protect your 40 acres. Everybody understand that? So this family here, five elders, <clears throat> seven different grandkids, three sets. One of them don't even get along with the family no more. When we brought that big mama con the conversation into our office, they didn't want to even get on the phone. <laughs> and I don't understand if my granddaddy is going to leave me. I don't care if it's a dollar. I'm going to be on the phone and listen. But our generation, that's the 35 and under. Now we just, we so selfish, we don't care. So I get it why you don't want to really leave no money. No more. I get it. But you put it to a trust, you protect your assets. You protect yourself. But now this family, seven grandkids, five elders, what are they going to do? They got land. And the one thing about it is grandma has a house, but the house is a reverse mortgage. And there's nothing wrong with a reverse mortgage. Let me explain this to you before I go into detail. If you own a house, your house is paid for. That means your house may be worth $100,000. You can do a reverse mortgage. You can take the value of that dormant house. It's not going to be exactly $100,000, but let's say it's $90,000. You can take that $90,000 and you can actually get income from that 90000 So let me, don't forget now, my generation, we love to leverage stuff. We'll probably have all kind of loans and all kind of stuff. Your generation, y'all pay things off fast and fast now. I get, I get that, there's a reason why. So with this reverse mortgage, you can take that 90000 and leverage it and use that 90000 to support your life. A lot of folks have to do it because now they qualify for long-term care they don't have enough assets to do so, but they got the biggest asset, which is their house, which is paid off. So you can do a reverse mortgage. The most important thing about this reverse mortgage, making sure you have proper life insurance. Because if you pass, somebody's got to pay that note off. So if you don't have life insurance, you can't pay that note off. So let me share this story with you. Although some of you are not my clients, I'm going to give you this sales, this sales tip. You can reverse your mortgage. Get the cash out, put it into an annuity, or put it into something that gives you income to support you and float your life. But you've got to have life insurance. So if you pass, you can pay off, excuse me, you can pay off that note. Your family doesn't have to have that debt, and you can still live in your house. That is important. Because this family, all this right here, land, house, cars, they got a reverse mortgage. And five of those elders. Only two of them know about it. Mm -hmm. Those grandkids, they don't know. And as much as I love my grandma, some folks don't like their grandma. Mm -hmm. So they don't care. They don't want their cash. Mm -hmm. So this reverse mortgage is also going to affect that family. When I talk about procrastination, because in that conversation, we brought that family together. Of those grandkids, one of those grandkids came to a meeting just like this and had the ability to get the family together. And we had a heart to heart conversation. And I had to bring in Pastor Brown because I know when we start talking about money and religion and land, a lot of times people are going to get mad at me, they can't get mad at Pastor. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, he's a spiritual bodyguard. I got to bring him in. I leverage him all the time. So because of that, we had a great conversation. And Pastor Brown and I left that meeting knowing that we helped that family. But that was almost a year and a half ago, two years ago. We had not heard from that family. They had tax problems. That they ain't filed their taxes in five or six years because they own the mobile home park. The mobile home is dormant. And we're telling them, we got the best minds in our business. We got a guy that can look at your mobile home. We'll help you maximize your mobile home, get you the income you need. We can structure everything. We can give it to them. It's Walmart, Christmas time, Santa Claus. We sent them out. We give it to them. So I can see why Pastor Brown get frustrated. He'd be up there preaching and preaching and preaching, and y'all still don't want to do right. I get it. Kids, so that's what, that's what we were. But this family, I call the Jacobs family. It's don't be that family, I'm telling you. Because life changing event has not happened. But grandma's 87 years old. She's not going to live forever. When grandma passes, they're going to call us for sure. Yep. And when they call us, it might be too late. Because life insurance can take care of all of that. If they have life insurance in place, they can make sure the seven grandkids are out the picture, or at least five of the seven are out the picture. They happy. All they want is, is their cash. Mm -hmm. That's all they want. 
<clears throat> you can give it to them. But if you don't give the cash, now they have entitlements and rights. So now if you don't want Uncle Johnny or Cousin Jim to have a conversation. He don't know anybody's own money. Now he's telling you how the family should dictate the money. <laughs> so if you get a trust, all that's gone. So as we say this, we've had that conversation with them, but they still haven't done anything. So as we're going to wrap up, we are here to tell you, trust the trust. I'm telling you now, the trust is powerful. It protects all things. You know, if you don't believe it, it's the last of life, folks. <laughs> they will co-sign for us. They'll tell you the best thing you should have done. Let you know that right now. So, what is in the trust as we wrap up? Number one, an assignment of your personal property, a declaration of your trust. You got your funding documents, which is your schedule A. That's all the stuff you have available. Next thing is your certification of your trust. That's your summary of everything. Then you have your last will and testament for those who say, I've got to have a will because 50 years ago, a banker told me I need to have a will. So I don't care what you say, I'm going to have a will because I trust that bank. Well, then I'm letting you know, when you have a trust, it gives you a last will and testament. Everybody understand that? So if you will have that will that you've got to have, it will be in that trust as well. And that will is designed for anything that you fail to mention in your trust. It automatically is going to be honored because of that will. Everybody understand that? Next one, your dual power attorneys. This means that if I become incompetent and I can't think for myself, then I've already told somebody else to think for me already before life happened. Hmm. Healthcare power attorney. That means that now I am brilliant, I am smart, but now I can't still make decisions. I think I'm smart. I ain't smart. I can't tell between black and white anymore. Healthcare power attorney. Now somebody in your family that you've already deemed can make those healthcare decisions for you. That's healthcare yes. power attorney. All those things will happen and your burial and final instructions. And you have products in place that will help you fund the trust, help you put you in the ground, and do things the right way. So you can pass away with dignity and respect and be remembered forever. Everybody understand that? So that's the trust. And it gives instructions for the person you trust the most, your successor trustee. So, we're asking, here's our office. Jones Franklin Road. <coughs> Hot Springs, maybe 15, 20 minutes from now. The corner of Jones Franklin, Tryon, off of US 1, right in north. We're right, we're right there for you. I live in Fuquay. We got people in Durham, Raleigh, Cary. We right around you. We know your church. We've been around your church. You no know, half folks in here. So what I'm telling you is, if you don't trust nobody, I don't know who you can trust. They trust somebody. Trust us. That's us. So we have a. We're kind of getting you 30 days because for some reason black folks should not even care about it. I learned it from my part. I learned from my part. I don't want to give nobody a deadline. But I reckon that black folks need a deadline. So you got 30 days. That means when you fill this stuff out, we are entitled to call you in 30 days. After those 30 days, you ain't gonna hear from us. <laughs> I ain't gonna be trying to track you down. If you already class of mine, then that's, that's different. <laughs> you ain't a client of mine, I can't track you down. I ain't gonna worry, because I ain't gonna call you, because I'm telling you right now, I'm emotional. I get frustrated when I call you at 5 o'clock, and you don't return my phone call until two months later. Mm -hmm. I get emotional behind that. <laughs> for some reason, I'm trying to help your life. If you think, I'm trying to make some money. I'm not sure where that correlation is. I'm trying to make sure you remember forever. So, 30 days. You got that white pamphlet. You fill it out. After 30 days, we ain't going to be calling them on this Pastor Brown until us come back in here and talk again. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Are you ready for questions? Yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, second opinions. Allow us to give you a second opinion. You got a guy, you trust him, you love him, that's great. One thing I will tell you, I guarantee you that your team that you deal with, they're not like our team. So you might have the best retirement planner, but I guarantee your auto insurance agent is not that good. I'm letting you know our team on a whole is the best thing for you. That's also important. 
If you've had a client who just is about to buy a house, when she's buying her house, we help her buy the house, we help her find the house, we help her get her auto insurance, we lower her homeowner's insurance, we gave her life insurance, all that because we are right there. We able to refinance her car, to lower her car payment, so she can get approved for that, that house. But if you don't have a team like us, that's all not gonna work. Because your mortgage guys gonna call you and say, you gotta put more money down at closing because your debt income ratio, that means the money you make and the money you have is more than what we thought. Well, if you got a team in place, we can catch it. So we, we wanna be on your wagon. And I'm telling you right now, we're pushing your wagon all the way forward. We're not going to be on that wagon holding you down and talking to anybody else. So we are the best for you. I'm letting you know that now. So second opinions, we strictly encourage that. And it's all confidential. So what that means, if I know your life, your pastor would not know your life. That is important to know. I will, he will not know what I know unless you invite him in. Does that make sense? Everything is confidential. Because of that, we have something called a generational vault. Mm -hmm. If you're not our client, you can still come to us. We can still help you get Big Mama family together. And we can put everything into a confidential vault. So when you have those I forgot moments, you can go online. You can find all your trust documents. You can find everything you want, life insurance, a whole nine. So your family don't have to scrounge around. That's the worst thing. Your family got to go through boxes mm -hmm. and find stuff you've done. You've already got it in place. I'll tell you again, I know we don't like doing this, but we are the best. I'm letting you know that now. So, Hollis Springs, there is a new normal coming. And if you haven't seen it, just get in your car when you leave here, put your windshield wipers on, cut your lights on, and just drive around where Target is. Just take a nice, easy stroll. And every now and then, just look to your left. I like to say, just count black folk heads. Just count heads. <laughs> just count them. Things have changed. Yes. So, I'm letting you know, uh, right around the time, I think it's 1987, 88, I, I'm not even 10 years old yet, there was about 900 residents in Hollis Springs. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you about 99.9% African American. Mm -hmm. We had one culture right. People used to be scared to stop that store up there. Mm -hmm. Now it's changed. Mm -hmm. Now we have over 28, 29,000 residents. The ratio used to be 90-some percent African-American. Now it's 80 percent Caucasian, 12 percent African-American, and it's others, Asians, and Italians, and Northerners, and so others. <laughs> so because of that, change is good. A lot of change is good. So I'm not mad about the change, but what I'm frustrated with and I'm not mad about folks coming in that is not of our community because they recognize something that's positive. What I'm frustrated with is in that change from 97 to 87 to right now, there was a lot of money that had exchanged hands. A lot of land has been digged up, been sold, been passed, been built on. And I'm going to ask you, because you guys are older than me, who made the money? <laughs> when I ask you that question, that's the forever and forgotten. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to find out that I'm a personality. I don't want to find out that we didn't make that money, that we don't have that money. I love when we sit down and have a conversation with a client that they've got $300,000 in cash that they sold their land. That's a great conversation. I don't like the fact that you own five acres and they lost it. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem we're having. So House Springs, I'll let you know now, things are changing. It has changed. Our culture has changed. There's a lot of money been made in this whole community. Did we make it? And if we did not make it, ask ourselves why. So can we do anything about it? Right now, we just get our life insurance and make sure your family does not lose what they rightfully own and rightfully deserve. Does that make sense? So we thank you for allowing us to come. We are here to help you. We're here to take care of you. We are in your community. This trust have what it looks like, it is $495, $495. So what I'll tell you right now, if you feel like you can't afford it, we'll make you a deal. You come to our office, we help you look at your tax return, we can guarantee you 
We can find ways. Hmm, we can save us enough money. We can afford this. We can do a review for you. We can guarantee you. We can look at your auto and homeowners. And we can find a way to save you money. You come to our office. We can refinance your house. We can refinance your car. We guarantee you. You give us about 10 days. I'm telling you, we good. You give us about 10 days. We'll find a way you can save about $500. Now, don't you take that $500 and go buy Christmas gifts. <laughs> <laughs> you take that $500 and you're going to get this right here. You got to get it. Uh, I'm telling you now, if you don't like me, that's fine. There's plenty of other people in my company you can deal with. Everybody hear that? If you don't like dealing with me, that's okay. We got plenty of advisors you can deal with. They're going to all speak the same language. They're going to sound, we all going to sound the same now. This ain't gonna be a different face. That's fine. Four ninety five. Don't please don't procrastinate. So we leave this room. At least I should hear from you. Yes, we're gonna do it, or no, we're gonna do it. Not right now. I'm gonna do it six months because of this. That's fine. Uh, we meet you where you are. But you please do this. I'm telling you this right now. Everybody understand that. So. Yeah, questions. But I'm. I will tell you this. We plan on getting the flyers and meet you individually to kind of get your questions, but any general questions that everybody needs to hear. Yes, sir. Mr. Wilson, thank you for coming to our church. And I'm already a client of yours because of the life-changing event, and I'm we're quite pleased with the products that you've given us. So I can certainly endorse you uh, in terms of being a part of the Street United Church Christ. But I had a couple of questions that you brought up. The tax implications on trust. Mm -hmm. What uh, can you give us an overall explanation? Is that trust tax? Okay, good question. The answer would be yes and no. Okay. Um, if you do it, if you fund the trust the right way, and if you do the right things, mm -hmm. the trust is not taxed. The myth is if you just have a trust and you don't properly design it the right way with your attorneys, then you, you have a chance to have a tax. So there's two different types of taxes. There's an income tax, right. and then there's your estate tax. So you have an opportunity to face an estate tax if you don't do it the right way. But yes, there is a tax if you don't do things the right way. Okay. And, and one question that's specific to the QAC. Yes, sir. I have to put 25% of that money into the stock market? Yeah, that's the thing, too. You don't have to, but for every positive, the government gives you. Oh, I'm all right with putting yeah. it into the stock market, but yes, sir. Do I use a? Can I use my broker, or can I? Uh, do you do that? We we do that. One thing I'll tell you, like your broker, they might know about it. Some brokers don't, yeah. but they might know about it. Most planners, like our firm, does. But it's a privilege to say that because I have this nest egg, and because I don't need this nest egg, I know I've got to do my R and D. I can take 25%, max 125, I can take that and I can keep it and preserve it. So it's a privilege and yes, it can't be tied to any life insurance, it's got to be tied to something that is, I hope so, money. That's an unfortunate thing. Right. Okay. I don't have a question, but we would like to make sure we have everybody who attended the workshop this morning. So I'm going to pass around this uh, clipboard. If you had already signed, just put a check by your name and initial. If you did not sign, there are pages where you can sign your name. So just, I'm going to start it on this row and we'll just continue to pass it. So please don't leave before we do that. Thank so you. So we're going to, uh, I believe we're going to have, have refreshments and have different things. As you're eating, we're going to walk around, shake your hand, say hello, grab those flyers. And don't, y'all don't make me mad. So I'll tell you now, and I'm gonna as we go through this, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna put our team up again. So just focus on the team as you eat. Pick out somebody you like and just maybe you can give them a call. Next question. Um, I know you said that it's 495 dollars Yes, it is. Okay. 
Yeah, so the question was, is that 495? Is it one time? And I tell you, I, I'm not, we're not like Time Warner. You know how Time Warner say you don't have to have streams and have a small line? You got to have one cord. Like, no. So it's 495. It's also $100 for any document, like a uh, mortgage, anything of property value. So if you own three homes, 495 for the trust, $100 per that actual entity. Next question. Yes, sir. I had uh, done the trust with you guys, and I want to thank you for walking me through that time. I sleep a lot better than that. But only uh, all of them be that you said that would take perfect from there. R M D and fund and life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will be interested. Okay. Yes, sir. We uh, we know your scenario pretty, pretty well, so we'll fill that information out. Go ahead and tell us when the best time for you. And we'll schedule for you and the family to have a conversation about that. But yes, sir. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I noticed that your trust has a. Uh, a will in it also. Yes, sir. And you were talking about that in probate. And the trust fund, uh, does the will in that fund have to go to probate? It is. Or, or, and if it does, if it if it does have to go to pro, probate, and there is a caveat, attestation assigned to it, mm -hmm. then do how does that operate as far as the trust itself is concerned and how, how those monies okay. are? All right. So all the will is in your trust is just to say anything that is not that you forgot to do. All that will does is says, Wayne, this is going to be going to XYZ. That portion of that will be going through probate because it's tied to the will, which is something we want to avoid. So the will is just, it's kind of like the closer in baseball. Just cl it's closing everything up, just in case you forgot to do something. However, that last piece will go through probate, which we want to avoid. So the perfect client gets everything tied to that trust. So therefore, nothing goes through the probate uh, time frame. You do the court system now. And, and what was your last question? Make sure I answer that. Well, if, if, if the, the usually, for example, if I have a last little test, and someone comes up, I think the term is caveat, will come up and say, well, you know, I was left out of this. Then they have to go to the clerk of courts and you know, they just start the process, which is, which is right along with the probate. Yes. I'm wondering if the trust, does it do away with that portion of it? Or just like if you get a last will and testament, only it's incorporated in your trust. Yeah, if you don't have the trust, obviously what you just stated is correct. It's just like one through, it is going through probate. If you do have the trust, anything that you have not tied to your trust, it go through that last will. You still have to go to the court system. You still have to act as if like you don't have that trust. But once you finalize it, then it goes to your trust. How many people have you had to pass since you've been in business that had the trust who's uh, who did not have to go through probate? How many people have passed since being in business? Five that didn't have a trust? No, that didn't have to go through the probate well, process. All, hold on. all of them. None of them had a trust. All of them had to go through probate. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, that, again, that is a that is something that we don't like because we told them about the trust. Right. But that's one thing that I don't do a good job of. Is Maybe I need to be a better salesman and demand stuff, but I don't feel like I need to demand something that benefits you. So, yes, we have five folks that passed. They had plenty of money, annuities, life insurance, the whole nine. They did not have a trust. They had a will, and they had to go through probate. What happens to the trust if the company goes out of business? Which well, company? Say your company. That's a good thing about it. We, we like to be served as successor trustee. So if we go out of business, your trust is still in place. Don't okay. forget, your trust is no different than you having a retirement with us. Mm -hmm. We're just the middleman, the liaison from, from for you, the insurance company, to you. We're just that middleman. So if we go somewhere, the big company, what happens to them? But I will ask the question back to you. We're not going to go nowhere. 
Right. Now, so the, the, the company may change names, we may change names, but we're not going to go nowhere. The biggest question will be, what happens to these big companies because they do change? Right. And, and that's basically my question, not for say your company, but you make more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Chrysler or somebody goes out of business, they restructure, you lose all your, all your stock. Correct. They come out with a new name and you just SOL. Well, that's the good thing about it. The whole, that's the whole so money. When you have no so money, that's all tied in contracts. That's all life insurance. So if you've noticed, all life insurance companies, they may change their name, they may go out of business, but it's just like a mortgage. When they sell their rights, somebody is buying them. to buy those rights, but then, but, okay, go ahead. And, but you're, but you're, still, in, you're still in business. So for those who may know ING used to be around, they, they are no longer around, but now they're called Voyager. Right. Same thing, same product, just different name. So you still have, for those who have ING products, it still says ING. Now you just get a letter from Voyager. So I've had clients that call me, because there's companies, there was a company called Aviva. A lot of folks had an annuity with Aviva. They called me and said, well, what happened to Aviva? I got a letter from Athena. Athena now, did they buy Aviva out? The answer is yes. But you still have a legal product. Now a thing just owns a vehicle. And that's a good thing. Tying everything to life insurance, everything to contracts, you don't have to worry about losing your money. Because if you do, you can now sue. But you can't sue if you got there's no contract with stocks and bonds. And, ain't no contract with that at all. Right. Last question. I just have a question. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Um, because I've always been hearing and talking about the wheel, the wheel, the wheel. Not too long ago, we just got a wheel. We spent a lot of blue on wheel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you didn't mention no trust. I understand. Let me ask you a question. Um, how much money did you pay for wheel? It was a hundred and something. Okay. One thing I will tell you. So one thing we throw away now, you get up? <laughs> um, Almost, yeah. But I'll, I will tell you this. You can go, you can write down a piece of paper that I want all my assets to go to my brother. You get a notary to sign your name and your brother's name. You got a will. You pay no money. What you pay for for someone to give you expertise to hopefully, hypothetically show you how to structure your will. I'm letting you know right now. You can pay $35, you could have went to Staples, you could have bought a Will's uh, DVD and went to work just getting your own will. A trust is a little bit different. So that's why we always talk about a source of advice. You, I, I commend you for doing what you thought was right and what someone told you was right. That's why I told you we're the best. Because when you sit down with us, we're going to structure and show you what's better. And one thing I will tell you is like, you're not going to just get all of us agreeing with you. Right? We don't we don't debate amongst each other with you right there. Because that's the our minds working. You will have all these different minds I talk with simple minds. Our simple minds are just working together to better you. So did you waste money? No, I think you just spent some money to know what's right. Yes ma'am. Okay. You call us, we'll help you turn everything over to that trust. Okay. Any questions? Well, well, thank you for everything. We're going to come around. Thank you.